hideous ain't a dead gun cat training video. Well, I don't know, I might do surgery again. Come on. There you go. There you go. Good kid. Blue Jays. I hear y'all. Alrighty, so you're wondering how to turn a beagle pup into a good rabbit hunting dog. Well, look no further. You're talking to somebody who's been doing this 15 years. I've owned, I don't know how many dogs. I don't know how many dogs, including pups and grown dogs and everything else. We're probably talking 40 or 50 plus. And I've never had a huge pack. You know, I've got I've got six dogs right now. That's the biggest pack I've ever had. So I ain't got a... I've never had a big old pack. As a matter of fact, for years and years and years, I only had anywhere from one to three beagles at a time. So I, let's just, so let's put it that way. I ain't went through a high amount of dogs to get to that 50 or 60 or whatever I've owned. And it might be more than that, including pups. I don't know. I had to sit down and figure it out one day. Anyways, that's beside the point. The point is, I've only bought like two dogs my whole life. I've raised and bred everything else. So, you're talking to a guy that don't buy rabbit dogs. You're talking to a guy that makes rabbit dogs and has been doing so for 15 years. So I think I'm a little bit qualified to be giving advice on this subject. And again, I could be an idiot. But either way, you're watching, so let's keep on going with it. Now, first step first, if you're going to, if you're getting into it, I suggest going and seeing some other dogs work and determine what you might like you might want a faster dog a slower dog a big one a little one a certain color figure out what you want if you've already been rabbit hunting for a little while and you've, you've been buying dogs and you said buying them you want to start raising them and breeding them and refining your own stock i mean you already know what you want so but the point of it is know what you what you want your end result to be and whatever that end result is find a male and a female whatever the puppy is Make sure his mom and his dad are really, really close to what you're already looking for. Because the closer the stock is that you start with, the quicker you're going to hurry up and get down to what you want. And it might be exactly what you want on the F1 generation or the first generation. But find some dogs, uh, a male and a female, that's already, you know, make sure those are the parents of the pup that you get to really push this home and really increase your chances of having what you ultimately want in the end. So step one, get a dog that's bred from what you want whether it be fast slow walkie talkies field trial dogs hunting dogs meat dogs whatever figure out what kind of dog you want first and get the parents to match or get to make sure those are the parents that match that's awfully dead gum wordy y'all get the idea start with good stock of what you like now after that Personally, I raise mine, and y'all have seen some of the stuff I've done raising them, and uh, some of the pups I've had helping them along, how to help a runt catch up, different things. So, if you raise them yourself, you get the pup, and as soon as their eyes are starting to open, get out there and sit down and play with them every day, about five minutes. Sit there and goof around with them. Just like, get them used to. You're trying to imprint on that puppy. Like I said, two weeks old, imprint with them out there five minutes, at least five minutes every day, 10 minutes, 15, whatever. Get them used to you. Get them used to your scent. Get them used to being food with, played with, picked up. Get them used to you. Uh, get them used to a human. So after that, you bump on along to six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks, as far as training is concerned, we're not going to get into worming and all that stuff. You know, just we'll talk about that in another video. But get into the training portion that's my personal opinion my pups are they're gonna be eight weeks old day after tomorrow so they're a little over they're almost eight weeks might as well say eight weeks old and already i got mine sight chasing tame rabbits i got mine since just scent trailing them just a little bit they're not doing it heavy right now but part of the training is is this right here get make you a hide go kill you a wild rabbit and you can train them with a tame rabbit hide, you can, but I recommend the wild one um, because it's a little bit closer to what they're ultimately going to be training with. Once again, it's kind of like picking out your stock to breed from. You want to pick out the best stock that's close to what you want in. in. Well, pick out the scent that's the closest. I use tame rabbits just to help build confidence and get them used to the sight training, get them used to the shape and the idea. But when it comes to strictly scent training, I like training them on a wild rabbit. And this is a swamp rabbit right here. So anyways, I'll make a video, I'll make another video in the future 
of how to make a training hide. But here's how to use a training hide. This has already been dried out. Hopefully y'all get a good look at that. Tail ain't necessary, just I'm a good skinner. So anyways, reach up in there, bring that hide, and start turning it backwards. And rabbit hide is thin, I mean, it's, it's like paper. Hopefully you can hear that. The back leather is the thickest. Y'all can hopefully hear that dull thud and that sharp crisp. Just turn it inside, turn it right back side out. I already tore a hole in it, just turned inside out. Like I said, this stuff is like paper. It will tear up on you in a dang heartbeat, especially on the belly. But either way, there's your rabbit hide, dried out, ready to train with. <coughs> you can use the whole hide. I think it's a little bit of a waste. I believe you need to take it and uh, get it off in sections. To me, I think that works a whole lot better. But anyways, you can use it whole like this if you do. Leave the belly on the inside, roll this up from that direction, roll it up from the other direction, and then just meet them together like a scroll that comes both ways. And then you tie your rope around the middle like that. Now the point of this is, is all them loose soft belly edges, if a putt was to grab a hold of them, he'd just rip it right in half, and if it starts ripping on the belly, it'll rip on into the main body of it. So I got all my soft, tender stuff facing the inside and it's protected. When you tie it around it, you got all this real thick leather guarding that again. And that's what you're looking for. So anyways, now <laughs> this is my training stick. I've had this one probably five or six years and it's, it, it ain't nothing to it. Just find you a dead gum stick somewhere, cut it down keep it dry and it'll last you a long time. This one's even got a bend right here in the handle where I've been holding it like a fishing pole training them pups so much through the years. That's how many pups I've trained with this stick right here. But anyways, a hangman's noose works really well. It ain't gotta be 13, even though this was a pretty unlucky rabbit. It ain't gotta be 13. So anyways, you wanna open it up a little, stick that hide in there and get it right in the middle. Cinch it on down. that's it there's your training hide and that'll last you for a long long time i've had a training hide on at times i've had them on for months the whole scent very well and to me when when you got pups it's better to train them pups when there's dew or moisture or something like that involved because moisture holds scent and it's easier for the pups to trail if there's more scent they'll have tougher conditions later on but in the beginning, you want to make it easy on them. That's all training is, is start from one thing, get them used to it without fail, move to the next step, just a little step, get them used to that without fail, and then move it up and move up. And you just do that about a couple dozen times, a couple dozen steps, you have your pretty good rabbit dog when it's all said and done. So that's a training hide, and that's a training hide setup, a little training pole. The reason you got it on a little bit of a rope here at the end, so you can hold it away from your body and drag it back and forth. I got the cats chasing it right now. But anyways, you can set one spot and just move it, figure eight back and forth and run the legs off them pups and it just saves you a lot of work. Also later on, when you're going to make your scent drags, sometimes a pup, he just, when he, when, they'll get used to tracking your scent, thinking I followed my owner's scent and I'll find where you hid that hide. Like when I'm in a drag, I'm talking about you hide the pup somewhere, leave him in a pen, you go drag the hide somewhere, around a corner, out of sight, leave it. And when it comes to that stage, he'll, sometimes he'll just fall to your scent. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're just dragging the hide behind you. So what you do, you take this old stick once again, hold it way off to the side. So for me, that's probably eight or nine foot out, Chunter, because I got about a three foot on. So and plus that's about a five, six foot pole. So y'all get the idea. So you'll have that scent way over there and you'll have your scent over here and you can quickly correct or you can quickly find out what he's doing or he's tracking you or the rabbit and correct that. But either way, in the beginning, that you ain't trying to do no scent training. You're just wanting to chase this like a toy. You want to get out there and play with it, make it fun. You don't want to burn them out in the beginning. You just want to get out there, 
uh, move it back and forth a couple times, let them enjoy it and have a good time with it, and just play with it just like a little chew toy. No scent, nothing serious, just let them have a ball with it. So really, as far as just strictly scent training is concerned, that's the beginning. Just treat it, treat it like it's a toy. So y'all have heard me talk long enough. Let's, let's get to the interesting part of this video. Let's watch some pups play. Okay, here we are with the little pup pen. I've already got them weaned, separated from the mama. All right, hush up. They're somewhat hush up broke, as you can <laughs> tell. So anyways, um, I've already got them used to them. They, when they come out, they just want to play and stuff. Just get on, cat. The less distractions, the better, like little cat stuff running around. You don't want that in the beginning. As time goes on, distractions are a good thing because then you can correct them. But in the beginning, you, you want little distractions as possible. That's why I'm running the cats off. Anyways, I'm gonna let them out right now. And also, don't feed them throughout the day. And this is my first opinion, don't feed them throughout the day. Because when it comes time to put them up, it's easier just to sprinkle some food in there and they'll put themselves up. And then you're just going about your rat killer. Here we go. Come on, puppies, come on. Come on. Hey, puppies. Oh, oh, look at y'all. Come on. on it, pet them, because it lets them know, hey, this is a good thing. I get rewarded for these. Good puppies. Alrighty. Dead, dead. There you go. And I tell them dead, because just like in real hunting or whatever, if they do get a hold of a rabbit, I want them to let it go. I don't want to sit down to fight them and them tear up the rabbit. I don't like it at all. I don't like them being too aggressive with a hide. <laughs> There you go. 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 And that little red one there, he's already barking at it. Good puppy. Yeah. Good dogs. Good dogs. Hey, 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 hey. All right, dead. There we go. All right, you ready? And if you're training them, and if you're training the litter, you sell. This is going to help teach you which pups are going to be optimal later on. Some of them going to have more drive. They're going to have more prey drive. They're going to listen better. Some's going to figure it out better. Some's going to use their nose better. And you're going to look at all these attributes, trying to pick out your pick of the litter. And that's one thing I like about raising pups. You get to cherry pick what you've already got. So I really like that aspect. Plus, this whole pups training is just cute as I'll get at y'all. Y'all got it, me. I, I love this part. But this is step one. Get them out here, pull it around the ground, let them have fun with it, and play with them. Spend time with them. Hey, 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 hey. Easy puppies, easy. And just, just a little pack like that's all it takes, because if you let them get too aggressive now, when they get a little older, it's just going to get worse. So correct it when it's young. It's like a little sapling tree. If, you, if when it's little and growing crooked, if you just kind of straighten it out and stake it up, you can fix it as it grows. But if you let it get big, and it's, you know, it's just gonna be a big old boat over a tree and you can't do nothing with it then. So straighten them out when they're young. All it takes is a little pops and you ain't gotta be hateful, but correct them when they're young. Don't, don't never think it's too early to start. There's too many people like, oh, you ain't supposed to start till they're four or eight months. That's bull crap. I got, I got rabbit dogs by the time they're four and eight. Hey, come here. Come on, easy puppies. So there's some people out there, literally. Hey, 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 hey. What's wrong with you, huh? What's wrong with you, okay? Are you okay? Now listen, you're going to quit being aggressive now. There you go. Easy, easy. There you go, puppy. <laughs> so anyways, 
start out now when they're young. Don't think it's too early to start training that pup and correcting them. That don't mean whooping them, being hateful to them. Just, just get on to them. That's all it's going to take. Another crucial thing is you don't want to burn them out on it. Even right now, they got kind of bored because it's just sitting here. Don't get out there three, four hours a day trying to train a pup if you're one of them die hard guys. Go 10, 15 minutes because you don't want to burn them out. Go just a little bit. Keep their excitement up. Uh, keep them going. Keep their drive up. Keep their want up. Don't just make it boring, you know. If it, if it gets to that point, start making it more of a challenge. But don't spend too much time. There is a such thing as too much time. You can burn a pup out. But anyways, that's pretty much phase one is just get you hide and go. Y'all know how to use one now. We got a video coming up on how to make this in the future. And we're gonna have more pup training in the future. Oh, we're already chasing that rabbit. <laughs> He doesn't run around the back. Stay with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's that's another video another time. Oh, are they going around back? Yeah, it right. might be a video right now. <laughs> it might be a video right now. Anyways, y'all wasn't supposed to see that right yet. Well, they run in the woods. They gone, they gone. Anyways, so everybody, so, y'all wasn't supposed to see that right yet, but uh, hear them in there. Those ain't even eight weeks old. I'm already started chasing. And I had to actually had to send him a little bit, that old blue dog did. I'm keeping that blue dog, by the way. Y'all ain't buying him. The other ones are still for sale if y'all want them, but uh, Anyways, I am not getting rid of that blue one. Y'all can kiss my tail on that one now. But anyways, hey, smoke. Hush up, baby. I'm sorry now. But either way, <laughs> yeah, they're still going through the woods. I know, I know. Anyways, y'all wasn't supposed to see that. That's supposed to be another video. We'll get on that in the future. Either way, y'all have a nice day, and that's step one. Get you hide and play with them. We <laughs> almost had a kitten join y'all. <laughs> I could train pups for a living. <laughs>